The black-necked cranes are at their most active at dawn. Having refreshed from the arduous voyage to the wintering land, the cranes expect four months of time free from the burden of procreation. Before the spring arrives, the most important task is to feed and rest in flocks. Here at the Cow High Lake, the equable climate and abundant food have attracted flocks of black-necked cranes. Besides them, common cranes, bar-headed geese, and egrets have all staked their claims. Called upon by the leading bird, the crane flocks take off toward the rising sun. Aquatic plants are more than enough for them, but the need for more quality energy drives the cranes away from the lake. In the periphery, the well-organized farmlands offer more delectable food for these highland creatures. During the annual voyages, over long distances, the cranes rely on the collective formation to reduce risks. The collective lifestyle during the trips is maintained in the wintering habitat. Numerous couples congregate to form more stable flocks. With their impressive physical presence, the black-necked cranes have come to dominate the lakeshore. In spite of their two-meter wingspan, these avian giants don't seem to be as territorial as in the breeding season. During the leisurely winter, they spend most of the time living in harmony with their neighbors, who are much smaller. They share the lake's bounty together. The abundance of food reduces the competition to a minimum, although occasional tussles are inevitable. With their imposing frames and dagger-like beaks, the cranes can easily settle the disputes. The snacks scattered across the area aren't manna from heaven, but deliberately left there by local farmers for the black-necked crane's compliment. After eating their fill, these migratory birds generously return the organic matter passed out of their bodies to the soil under their feet. This is their gift to enrich the land for a better harvest.